What's been the key to the uh, recent success for, for your pitching staff, especially the start? Yeah, I think uh, our ability to be really relentless in how we attack hitters. Uh, we've gotten a fair amount of ground balls recently, but I think we're just putting pressure on the hitters and the at bats. And you know, I think when you get hitters kind of feeling uncomfortable, uh, that's when they're more apt to chase. And uh, we can make we can make pitches with two strikes and, and kind of get the results that we want and the swings that we want. So manipulating bat speed and, and being ahead in the count, I think, is premium. I can't mention last night. He said we have great game plans and we're executing them. What? Without giving away any of your secrets, obviously, what goes into the plans and what are, what is working so well with that? Yeah, I mean, I think the one thing is that you want to you want to take the strengths of every guy into consideration when you when you kind of dive into what the game plan against certain hitters are going to be. Um, but what this pitching staff has is a ton of versatility, so the ability to beat guys in different ways and. Uh, you know, get three times through the order. You know, that's a huge part of the conversation, especially over the last five or ten years. And so we have guys that have different pitch types and, and different strengths, but their ability to do different things the second and third time through, I think, is what maximizes each individual guy. A week ago, the narrative was, you know, going into the Yankee series, you need to help in the bullpen. The Yankee series in this series, that narrative has changed. Has it been strategic or mentally? No, I think everybody's just kind of finding footing in their role, right? And I think um, an important thing to understand is every year is not like the year prior to that or um, the year prior to that. So it takes us a while to learn these guys, you know, and, and who they were in 2023 and 2022 is not necessarily the version they are now. So I think it's us about uh, the adaptability, the catchers, how they use the guy's stuff, how we target certain things, how we use guys inside of the game strategically versus certain pockets. You know, I think we're finding our footing and we're starting to understand who these guys are and who they're going to be in 2024. What's the difference between Craig Kimbrell when he goes out and strikes out the side like he did on, on Friday and, and the guy that we maybe saw last weekend against Oakland or, or the guy yesterday. Do you see those differences and, and what are those? Yeah, I mean, I, what I would say about that is it, a lot of it is execution based, but when it comes to pitchers um, and their deliveries and how they move, a lot of times it can be kind of like a slow leak and it's something that you don't recognize and you don't see you know, maybe for a few outings. And so I think as a, as a staff, it's really important for us to be in front of those things and then try to get the information to the player at the right time. Uh, but it's a two-way street and it's a two-way conversation. So ultimately, it's about getting him back to being kind of nasty Craig Kimbrell, you know, and so that's what the focus has been. What do you feel like he needs to do to get back to being nasty Craig Kimbrell? Yeah, I mean, execution is part of it, but just a lot of it is belief, a belief and confidence and seeing himself do well, you know, and I think that's the kind of the springboard for all of these guys. The little health thing he dealt with last weekend, is that in the past for him, you think, right now? Yeah, I do. I do. I think he got some really good work in the training room for those four days that he was kind of down during that series. And, uh, you know, he feels really confident how he's moving now. And, you know, he's a really mobile guy, so he can get himself into some positions that other guys can't. And so I think it's important, like, there's a bandwidth for him to kind of stay, keep the train on the tracks. And I think he's in a really good spot right now. I know the result last night wasn't great, but he threw the ball better than the line would say. How's Grayson been doing? Do you have any updates on his injury? Yeah, so he started a throwing program today. You know, return uh, to play is TBD, but we're just going to take it one step at a time. So we're just going to keep stacking days on top of each other and, and, you know, hopefully get him a couple bullpens in before, you know, we, we release him back. Do you think I see a rehab assignment before returning? I don't know. We haven't gotten there yet. Right now we're just kind of looking at the early stages, like getting him to his first bullpen. So that's what kind of today looked like. I would imagine if he's throwing already, though, it's pretty good news. Great news. Yeah, today was a really good day for him, and tomorrow, you know, obviously it'll be an off day, but we'll check in and, and we'll throw again with him. And so we're just going to take it one day at a time. And, you know, we've got a tentative plan right now, but ultimately it's about him feeling really good on that day before and after he plays catch. Is it just like a flat ground thing build up? He wasn't off the mound today, or was he? No, he just played catch at like 60 to 75 feet. So, yeah, we're going to take we're gonna take it slow and make sure we take care of him and, and get him get him back to feeling good, you know, before we ask him. To go to compete again. Sure. Uh, you talked about navigating three times through the lineup. Uh, game has certainly changed in the last 20 or 30 years. Do you think that pitchers, starting pitchers, should still uh, have to go five innings to get a win? That's a really good question. I guess I would lean, I would lean, I would lean yes, but I think there's extenuating circumstances that you know maybe would say that you know Kyle Bradley should get the win, you know, against New York the other day. Um, you know, I know what the league wants and, they're, you know, what they're asking and what they want these starters to do. And, you know, I kind of feel like this group in particular is a pretty old school, even though they're young. It's a pretty old school feeling type of staff. And uh, I think they expect themselves to go five innings or more every single time they take the ball. So, yeah, I would say so.
Do, do pitchers' wins matter to you? No, not at all. Absolutely not. I think team wins matter to me, and us uh, being able to give our team an opportunity to win the game matters more than anything. How big is he hitting CNL bat? How big is what? CNL bat. Oh, it's huge. It's huge. Not not only from the pitcher that he is, but the person that he is and the energy that he brings uh, to the bullpen. Uh, after his last rehab, I checked in with him, you know, through text, and he said, "I can't wait to be back in the bullpen with these guys." So, when when that's kind of like his thought and his priority, you know, that that means like the culture is really really strong, especially down there where it's you're kind of like the special teams. You know, you're out away from everybody, and people forget about relievers. And uh, you know, I certainly don't, based on my history. So, yeah. Is there any update on Tyler Wells? Uh, not yet. No, I think they're still working through like plan of care with him. So um, I'm waiting on an update as well. Okay, back to the pitcher wins thing. If, if that's a stat that maybe you don't care about, any other stats that you don't particularly care about? Any any stats that you you go that you see people reference that are like, why are you referencing this stat? No, I, I wouldn't say so, but I, I think that certain stats matter more for certain pitchers, right? So like, take a guy like Cole Irvin. Over his last three outings, he's getting over 50% ground balls. He's at like 66, 67% first pitch strikes. And the versatility that he has in his game lends me to think that like that that's the key to success for him is getting ahead and he's getting guys on the ground, especially the other night, you know, eight or nine ground ball outs. Burnsy the other night against New York, eight or nine ground ball outs. So when we have as athletic and dynamic of an infield as we have, like when we get ground balls, it's a really good thing for us. You're often looking at those underlying metrics, those underlying stats, more than the headline ones of, of ERA and, and strikeout rate and things like that? Yeah, because I think all of those things mesh into the final number, right? When we're looking at FIP and XFIP and XERA and ERA and all those expected things, it's a product of what we're doing in the process and all the all the things kind of in between sandwiched in there. One between ERA and FIP, which one would you choose? It's probably FIP. Yeah, it's probably, I think it's a, a little bit more of a real number for us. Yeah. Play your club. Yep, absolutely. Considering where everything was with Means and Bradish four, five, six weeks ago, has this played out as almost a best case scenario? And what kind of lift has it been for that clubhouse? Yeah, I mean, no doubt it's it's a shot in the arm to have those guys back, personally and professionally. Um, you know, and it just somehow baseball seems to things kind of just work a way to where the pieces just sort of fit at the right time. And I think, you know, unfortunately with Grayson and Wellesley, you know, those types of things kind of align with these guys return to play. So, um, but it's been really nice having those guys back. You know, John Means, uh, you know, AL Rookie of the Year uh, in the top three, uh, Bradish, what he did last year, and, and right there in the Cy Young hunt. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a big shot to have, you know, veterans back in the, uh, in the rotation for us for sure.